in our fast-paced life, we often talk, especially in spiritual circles, we talk a lot about mind. In my opinion, not often enough though, we talk about the brain. It kind of goes into science and scientific circles and we are not really about physical existence. We are way above it. Are we really? Because in fact, this is a brain which allows us to withdraw the information from conscious and subconscious mind to mix them together to give us what we call a whole picture. It is actually a brain which filters those informations. So some of them are allowed kind of to enter our conscious mind and some do not. It is a brain which fuels the mind and lets it operate and we think that we are so smart. But are we truly? So let's look how what is the role of the brain in dowsing process and actually in many processes in our life so we as dowsers and just average human person human being can distinguish between our emotions which runs our life and understand how brain influence our life decisions. Which part of the brain? We have three parts, three main parts, or three brains as we call them. Which of those three influence our subconscious decisions, conscious decisions, how they cooperate together, and how they really make us react in life to what happens around us. But most of all, brain has a huge influence on our spiritual development. So I would like to invite you to this short, but I hope fascinating uh, journey through our three brains and their roles in dowsing. And of course, our spiritual development. I am Alicia Ratin, and by official training, I am a chemist and environmental engineer. And that brought me to the point when I decided to mix spirituality with science. So being also a reverend, it helped me to bridge science and spirituality. At it. Let's look for a moment how it looks from the science point of view and then we'll explore spiritual aspect of it. The philosopher René Descartes in 17th century said cognito ergo sum, which means I think, therefore I am. And however, life can be defined differently by different people, most thinkers and philosophers agree that the essence of life is an awareness of being alive. In mid 20th century, Maclean developed the model of human brain. That is really the groundbreaking work on the human brain and everyone who was, who developed anything and delivered to us anything really based his work and research on Maclean's model of human brain. Maclean said and proved that we have three types of three parts of the brain and each of them um, has a specific role in our development. So let's look at it. The primitive brain, which is which we call also reptilian brain, is a brain which is run by instincts. It is basically 
fight or flight. This brain is a survival, uh, is responsible for survival state of our body and asks only about am I safe? And it is built of brain stem, pons, and cerebellum. This part is always looking after your safety. The other part of the brain, though, is the limbic or mammalian brain, which is responsible for, um, for processing emotions and feelings. And we call it hard brain, which means it talks about emotional state of your body and it always asks, am I loved? It is built of cerebellum and cerebral medulla which is kind of inside of this. We can see here the part, but it also goes deeper in this side and deeper in this side. It will prevent you from doing things which create emotions and may in fact create or uh, make people reject you. And that's why public speaking is a second biggest human fear after fear of death. Let's go farther and look at the third brain. Only the third brain is neocortex, the rational or thinking brain, which is built of cerebellum, uh, cerebrum, I'm sorry, and we call it gray mass, or in Europe it is called white mass, just because it's white inside and covered by this gray layer on the top. This is a mind's brain, and it is responsible for always searching for the answer to the question, what can I learn from it? Which means, what's in it for me? I can like you, Alicia, but if you do not deliver something what I need to learn, then you can feel safe with me, I can love you, but I will still not take your course just because there is nothing in it for me. Neurocortex is responsible for logical thinking and it thinks it runs the show in our life. Now, in the center of it, there is shape like um, Eye of Horus. This shape of Eye of Horus contains in it three very important glands, which we'll talk about in a moment. So let's see. Pituitary gland is this gland which is here and is connected with our third eye. And toward the back of your brain, there is pineal gland. Pituitary gland is a called master gland because it coordinates all the glandular system of our body. Pineal gland though, even by scientists, is called divine gland because it creates a magnetic field, very strong, well more active it is stronger, the, the field will be, uh, so magnetic field and it also vibrates the frequency of gold, which we can see as a halo behind the head of uh, saints, if you are Christian or any um, an enlightened people. Those two glands work together like this. Pituitary and pineal are the biggest friends and they activate each other and they cooperate with each other. The third gland, which are very important, however, not mentioned that, that often, unfortunately, is hippocampus. Why is it important? Because hippocampus is responsible for consolidation of information from short-term memory, which means what happened to me now, into long-term memory and, and a special memory 
which is not our subject for today, that enables navigation, which means allow us to drive, to ride a bike and so on. But what is important about hippocampus is that it really consolidates the short term with long term, which means what I did at that moment, what my experience was, will be pushed back into long term memory so I can refer to it and I can learn from it. The name hippocampus came from Greek expression seashore. And actually, you can see here, this is a sea, uh, sorry, seahorse. And this is seahorse as it is in nature. And that's the, the shape of hippocampus. As you can see, it is located in limbic from both sides, which means there is one on um, at each uh, hemisphere of our brain, so we can coordinate our expressions and our memories. Now, so let's talk at the brain because in fact it ages slower than our physical body, which gives us a higher chance of living longer and still having brain functioning perfectly. So according to the scientific research, for proper functioning of human brain, it requires, it requires six kilocalories of energy for every billion of neutrons per day, per 24 hours. Well, what does that mean, one billion of neutrons? Let's look at it. Science estimates that neocortex in human brain uh, has been developed roughly about 360 million years ago. And that human brain as it is today, well, at the beginning of 20, 21st century, it, it consists um, about 86 billion of neutrons. And only 16 billions of those are located in neuro, neo, neocortex, which means that from 86 billion of neutrons, only 16 of them is responsible and take place and it's active when we think and when we use our logic. 70 billion of neutrons are completely disconnected from your thinking, rational, thinking process, but cerebellum responsible for our safety, which takes only 10%, if you, if you remember, it's like a small buildup on your uh, brainstem. It takes only 10% of our brain mass and 80% of nervous cells, which means that um, cerebellum contains 69 billions of neutrons. So we have 16 in neocortex, 69 in, um, in safety, so 16 in thinking, 69 in safety center, and only one is left for our emotions and feelings. That shows us very clearly that 86 billion of neutrons, which really contain, um, is contained in our whole brain, needs almost 560 kilocalories per 24 hours. Now we can think that maybe because of that, people who are on low calorie diets, especially at the beginning before their uh, energetic system is used to it and, and, and kind of reorganizes itself and reorganizes the distribution of energy because brain will be the first to feed. 
That's why people are foggy, feel unsafe at the beginning, they are sleepy and so on, because the organism tries to use as less energy as possible at the beginning, so the brain will be fed. How we get this energy? Well, there is a part, again, which is quite unusual, and it is called mitochondria. I call it our personal power plant, because a long time ago, mitochondria was a separate being, and then they started to live in symbiosis with our body. And now they are fantastic parts of our body, characterized by having their own DNA and RNA. So they are not like a virus, which only has RNA and therefore needs a host through which it can reproduce and on which it can survive. But mitochondria can operate in our body completely uh, by itself, separately. However, it's a part, of course, of our system because it also, uh, it also has its own DNA. Now, so mitochondria processes everything, a food which we eat and, 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 and the energy from exercises and all this what we do to, to uh, you know, your, your meditation, your connection with the universe and so on. And it kind of fuel your brain and the rest of our body, but today we're talking about the brain, uh, with the proper amount of energy so it will function well and help us in our life. And now the question is, what all what we said has in common with dowsing? Well, let's think about what radiastasia or what dowsing really is. Because dowsing, the word dowsing, cannot be really put into um, divided into phonics to really fully understand the, the root meaning of it, I will show you the European expression for dowsing, which is radiastasia, and who will analyze it based on this to understand the core, the essence of dowsing. So radiastasia is a word which describes dowsing in Europe. Radiastasia is not better or worse than dowsing. It's exactly the same. If people say that they're doing, doing something else because they use radiastasia, they fool you. It's not true, or they don't know what they are doing. They don't understand it. So let's go into understanding of it. Radiastasia, the word radiastasia has been derived from two words, Latin noun radius and Greek noun aesthesis. And radius means a straight line extending from the center of the circle or sphere to the circumference or surface, which means in short, it is a ray. That's why in English we always say, um, uh, we say either ray or radius. Now, Greek words aesthesis means perception from the senses feelings, hearing, and so on, all the senses which we have, which means aesthesis, aesthesis is a sensitivity. When we put those two words together, we will see that radiastasia is nothing else what, but sensitivity to rays. Dowsing teaches us to be sensitive. Dowsing helps us to be sensitive to specific rays, to specific waves, and to specific frequencies. And we talk about this in separate lecture. And before we will go further, I would like you to um, remember the words of Leonardo da Vinci, who who said, learn how to see it. Realize that everything connects with everything else. It's very, very important because first of all, 
it was said at the beginning of 16th century. Second of all, it is a base for remote dowsing and it is a base for all um, aspects of healing with radiastasia. Also, all holy books in the world will tell you ask and you will receive. Knock and it will be open. What will you receive? You will receive the answer. So let's imagine in graphic form, how does it work? We know that everything is connected with everything. However, we respond to only specific stimulus at specific moment of time. Otherwise, the life would be very, very hectic. So we have a problem. And let's imagine that this is me or you, and we have a problem. Our whole energetic system is the state of urgency and it's very hectic because the universe and the nature likes balance. So when we have a problem, question or issue to solve, we are in very uneasy state, which is state of imbalance. Now, the whole universe really and you may think that it's overestimation, but it is not. So whole universe start to orchestrate something which will bring the balance to your system or mine. So how it is, how it works from our body and mostly through the, through the um, crown chakra, this vortex comes out. And the vortex spirals to the left because the left turn spiral uh, vortex uh, creates a suction. And then the only thing what we want to balance our system is to suck in, to absorb the energy of the answer so we will come back into the balance. And that's why the whole universe works on it and, and arrange the energies the, the way that it will be available for you there. That's why we often say that if you don't have, if you have a question, there is an answer around. If there is a poison, there is also a cure around. And also we say, that when student is ready, teacher will appear because there is always whatever, whatever predicament we have in life, there is always compatible energy which hangs around to really help us to solve this predicament, to get over it and be safe, loving and balanced again. So when we said that our whole energetic system has this huge problem to solve, there is also an energy which comes. And then there is another vortex which rotates in opposite direction, which means which rotates to the right clockwise, because that vortex is, is a vortex which gives, which sends the energy. And through this vortex, we absorb the energy to, to our whole energetic system in order to satisfy it, to make it whole again. And the problem has been solved. Now, the question is, should we or should we not ask questions? You see, I came from different teaching system and we were taught to communicate with your pendulum instead of asking questions. So my pendulum, regardless of which I have in my hand, is my best friend. And I talk to it and I say, listen, we have to solve this problem. And the problem is like this. 
I want to fly to Europe this November or for Christmas. Let's see how it will go. So I will say, I'm going to Europe in December 2020. Your energetic system now is filled with the energy, I'm going to Europe in December. What happens next? My energy system can be or may not be compatible with the solution to the problem. So the energy around me will say, yes, this is true what you said. It's a valuable statement. Yes, you are going. Or there is, there is lack of compatibility between what you said and what the energy of the future says. So my pendulum will move into no direction. And therefore, I don't have to uh, be like a child. And I, I am not making fun of all those of you who ask questions. I'm just comparing to the child because children have a tendency to ask million questions per, per minute. So we are not anymore like an, children who say, tell me, tell me, tell me, do you love me? What I can do? Um, should I go there? And so on. But you kind of become an, an, a partner with the universe. You say, that's my statement. I will do this. You see how you feel? You feel at your power. This is what I say. And therefore, I, uh, I, I wait for your opinion about what I said. I will not have to follow. I'm not obligated to do what you say, but this is my position at that point of time. What is yours? And then pendulum will move into your yes or your no direction. Now, of course, not everyone has to use the statements instead of questions. But if you will give it a fair trial, you may find out that when you doze, you feel stronger and more positive. And the universe communicates with you exactly the same way as if you would ask a question, will I fly to Europe in December, but then it's, I feel, at least I feel, and because we were taught, we're trained this way for years and years before I came here, that you are weak because you have no idea what to do and you have to have someone else to tell you. While with statement, you are sure, you say what you want, and then the universe responds to it and say, I don't think so, or absolutely, I agree with you. That's how our brain cooperates with us, with the rest of our body. That's how we manage our life. But don't forget, it's always better if you are a master of your brain, not, not its slave, that you are behind the, the wheel and you make decisions in your life. It's not egotistic or being full of yourself because at the same time, and I believe all of us are highly spiritual beings, we are humble and we know our role in the whole society and the universe. That makes us even stronger when we say specific statements. And that brings us to the conclusion of our lecture today from Dale Carnegie, who said that in action breeds doubts and fear. Action breeds, con breeds confidence and courage. If you want to conquer your fear, do not sit home and think about it. Go out and get busy.
And I'm very, very happy that you have decided to virtually go out and get busy and at attend this conference and learn more and do your best to become better, better human being, better person, every, at every aspect of your life. And I thank you very, very much. If you feel that this lecture was useful to you, you can visit us on our website, intuitivedowsing.com. You can also learn more from our YouTube channel, join us on our Facebook page. And also, if you are more in, interested uh, in scientific dowsing, I invite you to connect with me through our website and we will welcome you in our private Facebook group, which is called Scientific Dowsing, where we explore things and problems from scientific point of view, as well as from spiritual point of view. It is a private Facebook page, just because we don't want to have people who are not truly interested in dowsing as a very serious, however, fun to do, part of science and knowledge and wisdom of our ancestors. Thank you very much one more time. Wishing you absolutely wonderful conference and all the best in your personal and dowsing life.